Greetings everyone and welcome to another lesson of grammar. Today we're going to talk about nothing more about subject verb agreements. Whoa, what are those? Subjects, who does the action? Verbs, what is the action? And how do they need to interact to agree? Without further ado, Let's start. Well, we have to acknowledge that English grammar is economic, for which there are not too many things that we need to take into account when formulating sentences. Sentence in English needs to have at least three elements. It needs to have a subject, a verb, and a punctuation sign. However, subjects and verbs they also need to agree with each other. And what does that mean? It means that singulars go with singulars and plurals go with plurals. What is that? If we have a singular subject, then it needs to agree with the form of the verb that is also singular. If we have a plural subject, then it needs to agree with a verb that has a plural form. This is the basic pattern. And what happens here? We take the basic form of the verb and only in the third person, we're going to add an S to the verb. For example, if we take the verb walk and we conjugate it, we're going to have I walk, you walk, she it walks. We walk, you walk, they walk. Therefore, as you see, the only change that happens is in the third person singular where we add an S to the basic form of the verb. And the same thing will happen with other verbs that are not irregular in the present tense. Now, when we talk about the third person, remember there is third person singular and there is also third person plural. Third person singular would be he, she, it. But not only these words you're going to see in your sentences, because you can have a name like Paul, a professional, let's say Dr. James, objects, table, a being, a cat, a profession, a bank teller, or a historical figure. Why not? Abraham Lincoln. Now, when we talk about third person plural, we refer to they. And this is going also to appear in other forms, like the Smiths, or both, washer and dryer beds, cars, several, and so on. Therefore, if we look attentively, in the singular, we have the boy walks. Who is the subject? The boy. What does the subject do? Walks. In the plural form, we're going to have the boys walk. Who is the subject? Boys. What is the subject doing? Walk. Now, if you look attentively, you're going to see that in the singular form, the subject does not carry an S, but the verb is going to carry the S. However, in the plural form, the subject carries the S at the end, and therefore the verb is not going to carry the S. And this will happen only in those cases when plural nouns are formed by simply adding an S at the end of the singular form. Now, if we have a verb that is already ending in S, like in this case, confess. Things are going to change a little bit. 
because in the third person plural, as you see here, we're not adding only S, but we need to add ES, and that is going to make the form he, she, it confesses. Let's look at irregular verbs, and we're going to take here the verb to be. If you see, we're going to conjugate it, I am, you are, he, she, it is, we are, you are, they are. If you look closely, you're going to see that although this is an irregular verb, in the third person, it is still going to end with an S. Okay? Therefore, singular goes with singular, which means singular noun, singular verb, plurals go with plural, plural nouns, plural verbs. Let's look at this example. Susan takes a walk every morning before leaving for work. Who's the subject? Susan. How many? One. What does Susan do? Two takes a walk. So to the verb, we're going to add an S as Susan as the subject is singular. Let's look at the second example. A hurricane spins in a huge spiral around a central eye. How many hurricanes? One. That is, hurricane is our subject. What does the hurricane do? Spins. We add S at the end of the basic form because we need to make this agreement between the subject and the verb. Let's look at another example. Ice cream shops do most of their business during the summer months. What is the subject? The subject is shops. How many? Many. Plural. It carries already the S. Therefore, the verb is not going to add an S. This is why we have the ice cream shops do most of their business during the summer months. Let's look at another example. In the kitchen of the new restaurant, crates of dishes and glasses wait to be unpacked. What is the subject? Crates. How many? Many. Plural. So it already carries an S. Therefore, the verb is not going to add an S. This is why we have the form of the verb wait. Let's do now some practice. Roberto insists or insists on biking every day, rain or shine. Who's the subject? Roberto. How many? One. Does it carry an S? No. Therefore, the verb will need to add an S to the basic form. And if you said, Roberto insists on biking every day, rain or shine, then you were right. Let's look at another example. Because the sisters is or are so busy, they rarely see one another. What's the subject? The sisters. Singular or plural? Plural carries an S. Therefore, the verb is not going to carry the S. And if you said, because the sisters are so busy, they rarely see one another, then you were again right. Now, there are some problems in subject-verb agreement. And we need to look a little bit closer at these issues. First element that I would like us to pay attention is when we have a prepositional phrase that comes between the subject and the verb. Let's look at this example. The members of a softball team practices or practice every afternoon until 5 p.m. Now, let's break it down and let's see what happens here. What's the subject? Well, this is what we need to find out. Is the subject members or is the subject team? Well, 
What we have here is a prepositional phrase that goes between the subject and the verb. And this prepositional phrase is of a softball team. We know that this is a prepositional phrase because it starts with the preposition of. Therefore, what comes after that is the phrase, the prepositional phrase, for which team cannot be the subject. Remember this. If a noun is preceded by a preposition, that noun is never going to be the subject of the sentence. Therefore, our subject is members, and we need to make the agreement based on this subject. And if you said the members of a softball team practice every afternoon until 5 p.m., then you were right. Now, another issue can happen when we have indefinite pronouns as subjects. Which are those indefinite pronouns? First, we're going to look at those that come from the family of one, like anyone, everyone, someone, no one. If it is one of these, then the agreement is made in the singular, because how many we have? One. If the subject is from the family of a body, like anybody, everybody, somebody, nobody, then again, the agreement is going to be made in the singular. Because how many bodies we have? One body. Now, if the subject is from the family of the thing, like anything, everything, something, nothing, Again, we're going to make the agreement in the singular. The same is going to happen if we have each, either, or neither. Let's look at some examples now. If no one comes or come to their yard sale, Pat and Amy will donate the goods to charity. So, what is the subject? No one. How many? One. Singular. Does it carry an S? No. Therefore, the verb needs to carry an S. And if you said, if no one comes to their yard sale, Pat and Amy will donate their goods to charity, then you were perfectly right. Let's look at another example. Everything on the table look or looks good to me. What is the subject? Everything. How many? One thing. Okay, we said that from the family of things. Does it carry an S? No. What does that mean? That the verb needs to carry that S to make the agreement. And if you said everything on the table looks good to me, then you were again right. Another issue that we need to pay attention to is when we have subjects following the verb. And which are these cases? If the subject follows the verb, then the sentence is going to begin with the word here or there. It is going to begin with a prepositional phrase followed by the verb or the sentence will be a question. Let's take each one of them separately and let's see what happens there. First case, when the sentence begins with the word here or the word there, here is your ice cream. The subject comes after the verb, therefore the subject is ice cream and we make the agreement with ice cream. Therefore, the verb needs to be is. Let's look at the second example. There are no more teachers left in the box. This is another example of a sentence that starts with there. 
which means that the subject is going to come after the verb. And our subject is tissues. How many? Many, plural. Therefore, the verb is not going to carry the S. Now, if the sentence begins with a prepositional phrase followed by the verb, then the subject is going to be again after the verb. Let's look at this example. On the top of the refrigerator. What is that? This is a prepositional phrase. How do I know that that's a prepositional phrase? Well, look at this preposition, on. So, what comes here? That is for sure a prepositional phrase. Now, we identify the verb, sit. What sits here? The keys. How many keys? Many. It carries an S. Therefore, the verb is not going to carry the S. Now, if the sentence is a question, again, the subject is going to come after the verb. And in this case, you can see we have a sentence that is a question. We have a question mark at the end. The sentence also starts with a question word, what. So we have the verb and the subject coming after. What's the subject? Answer. So the verb needs to agree with the subject. Singular, singular. Now, let's see what happens when we have compound subjects joined by the word and. And let's read this example. A good book and a warm fire are ideal companions on a winter night. So what is the subject? Here we have a compound subject, which means that it is composed of two nouns, book and fire. Book and fire makes how many? Two. Therefore, we already have a plural and the verb needs to make the agreement in the plural. Now, let's see what happens when we have compound subjects that are joined this time by or, either or, or neither nor. If we have one of these cases, then the verb is going to agree with the subject that is closer to the verb. Let's look at some examples. Isha or her brother is or are scheduled to arrive today. Here we have a compound subject joined by the word or. Therefore, the verb is going to agree with the noun that is closer to the verb. And in this case, what is closer to the verb? Brother. Therefore, we're going to agree with brother. And the sentence should be, Keisha or her brother is scheduled to arrive today. Let's look at another example. Keisha or her parents. Oh, see, now we have Keisha, singular, or her parents, plural. But the rule said, we're going to make the agreement with the noun that is closer to the verb. What is the noun? Parents. Is parents singular or plural? Plural. Therefore, it needs to agree with the verb also in the plural. And if you said Keisha or her parents are scheduled to arrive today, then you were right. Let's look at one last example. Keisha's parents or her brother is or are scheduled to arrive today. Again, we have a compound subject going by or. Which one is the noun that is closer to the verb brother? Brother is singular or plural? Singular. 
Therefore, it needs to make the agreement with the verb also in the singular. And if you said Keisha's parents or her brother is scheduled to arrive today, then you were right. Well, that is all for today. If you would like to continue learning, please consider subscribing to the channel and activate that notification button. Thank you very much for today. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.